what are some of the FDA approved treatments for relapse or refractory ANL? This question brings up the importance of testing for underlying gene mutations. And we've been, in the past 10 years, we've had some really, really great advances in understanding the mechanisms that cause the leukemia. And in so in understanding that, we've been able to come up with new agents that are targeted against those specific mutations. Two mutations, IDH1 and another one, IDH2, that have been um, recognized in about the past 10, 12 years. So for the IDH2 patients, uh, uh, patients whose, whose leukemia displays this mutation, IDH2, a drug in a sidenib has been uh, invented, if you want, that um, it, it, it leads to um, control of the leukemia. Um, classically, it, however, it doesn't, when we start the treatment, it doesn't control it straight away. It takes time. So it's easily administered and it's a, and one has to remain on the treatment and it may take up to six months to really get start to, to get a, a good response. So these agents don't always work immediately like some other agents that we use, um, especially the very intensive chemotherapies we see responses fairly quickly because they are annihilating the bone marrow, if you want, the cells in the bone marrow. And then you, you hope that the normal cells will recover and the leukemic cells will, will, will not recover adequately. So in a way, that's what we're doing with intensive treatment, but these treatments are different. They take time to work. And so, there's the drug enosidinib that works specifically for patients who have the IDH2 mutation. And then the, there's another agent that's uh, been approved, evosidinib, for ID, patients with IDH1 mutations. Now, these two mutations occur in, in about 15% of patients with AML. So it's not that everybody has got these mutations. So one has to look for these mutations at diagnosis or at the time of relapse. It's to, to look and see what mutations are present and then decide on what treatment one's going to use to target the leukemic cells. So Evacidinib is a similar agent in a way to the inacidinib for IDH2 mutations. This is for IDH1 mutations. So if one sees the presence of the mutation and certainly when they relapse, one can introduce these agents. And um, sometimes they are given in combination with other with, with a hypermethylating agent. But, but, but um, it, it depends on the, the decision of the, in, in the physician whether to use combination or single agent uh, targeted treatment. Then for FLT3 mutations that, that have, uh, have been mentioned, they are very important mutations that increase the risk of relapse of disease. So patients with these mutations may go into remission with standard chemo intensive chemotherapy, but the remissions don't last long and they will often relapse. And so there are the, the, the gilteritinib is a new agent. Uh, Dr. Shema has mentioned the mitostorin, both really good agents to use for patients who have the FLT3 mutations. Um, and so these are targeted, especially to use if a patient hasn't had any of them with the initial treatment for the AML, but they are classically administered with relapse or, or if 
ideally mitostorin is added to the intensive chemotherapy regimen that's being given and to target the, 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 the leukemic cells that have the mutation. So important. Then there's a new agent that combines the Dorna rubicin, that's the anthracycline and cytarabine or RSC. Um, it, it's given in a different way. It's given as, as a single agent compared to the combination of the two treatments that were used in the past. So the, a, new, a new drug that's used especially with some better efficacy than the standard regimen of, of the two agents that if, for, and are used for patients who relapse. So especially older patients, who have relapse of their leukemia, it, um, th this agent, it's a CPX um, um, that combines both, both drugs um, and in a different form when given separately. It's, it, it's in a lipid type uh, uh, um, formulation that maybe have lead to better efficacy of the treatment um, than standard a combination treatment that we'd use. So, the, and then a and, and very important new agent that has been approved in combination with hypermethylating agents or low dose RSC, cytarabine, is the drug venetoclax. Um, that is, it's, a, it, it's also in a way a targeted therapy. Um, against the, uh, the BCL2 abnormalities, but the, even that is quite, it, 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 one doesn't have to show that there is a BCL2 abnormality or uh, a mutation. Uh, so venetoclax, it's, it's a really good agent used often in combination, again, for patients in relapse, especially when combined with one of those three agents. So these are just some of the new treatments that have been approved recently. So a new, new a, a fairly new agent, although it was used about 20 years ago, and that's a gentuzumab um, drug um, that uh, works against a specific marker on, on cells, on myeloid cells, CD33. That's an agent that can is used especially in patients who relapse um, it may be combined with other other drugs but it's also it's certainly used in europe in um where they combine it with the standard intensive chemotherapy uh, of um, the, the cytarabine and an anthracycline so one other drug that helps our armamentarium to fight AML, 